Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you're watching this. We're back on my son's power wheel build. Um, he's only driven it a couple times because it's just, it's geared way, way too high. Uh, it's pretty much impossible with what we got going on to be able to gear it to a point where it's safe for him to drive. Right now it's geared to like 20 miles an hour which is which is too much. And then the second thing um, that I think is an issue is that um, it's too narrow. I wanted the tires to stick out of this thing a little bit more but you can see they're pretty close to flush with the body. so. Those are the two issues that we're going to address in this video. I'm going to, one, make a jack shaft, and that's going to cut our speed almost in half. Uh, so we're going to put a jack shaft on this. And then secondly, I'm going to widen this thing, well, at least I think I'm going to. I should be able to. Um, but we are going to widen this thing probably two inches on each side, maybe more. We'll see. We'll make that decision when we get there. But yeah, so uh, jack shaft, widen the wheelbase on this, or the track width. So the first thing I need to do is just yank the engine out of this thing. And actually it's going to be the engine and the swing arm, the whole back end of this. And then we can start on the jack shaft. All right, so here's what I got going on. We have the engine sitting here. We've got our 75 tooth sprocket. There's a chance that this is gonna be too big and we're actually gonna have to go back down. There's a rooster. We have a 5 8 jack shaft, a 10 inch one. I kinda need one even shorter than this, but this will work out. We might cut it down. Uh, we have a 10 tooth jack shaft sprocket, and, or this is a 10 tooth jack, jack shaft sprocket and a 20 tooth jack shaft sprocket. So, I believe it's going to go, oh yeah, it's going to go from the engine, I believe, to the 20 tooth jack shaft sprocket, and then to the 10 tooth jack shaft sprocket. So, um, but both of them are going to have to fit on this side over here. So basically something like that, you know, where we've got our jack shaft, our engine drives this sprocket, and then this 10 tooth sprocket goes towards to the uh, front, not the front, but the actual axle sprocket. So that's what I'm working on. I'm basically just trying to figure out the, logistic, the logistics of all of this. And then we're going to build some plates to house our uh, 5 8 bearings for the jack shaft to ride on. I also have some lock collars, some 5 8 lock collars if we need that. And various spacers if we, if we need to go down that route. So this is going to be a little bit complicated. It's going to be kind of cramped. Um, I think one of the main problems that I'm going to run into is chain tensioning, how I'm actually going to be able to tension the chain here. So that's where the issue is going to come in. It's like we need to make this uh, jack shaft be able to slide just a little bit to tension the chain for the axle because the axle, this sprocket can't go anywhere. There's no tensioner there. Unless we built in a tensioner, that's the other option is building some sort of tensioner. Um, and then the other thing is with this big sprocket and this little tight of clearance, you could, you know, slide the engine back to tighten up this other sprocket and chain situation. But if this in, this engine is already all the way forward, I loosened it and slid it all the way forward to see if it would clearance this. If I, you know, tucked this in, because I needed to tuck this um, clutch all the way in, take all the spacers behind it, so that we can get this gear as close as possible. So that's the second issue: is that it might just run into this. Uh, sprocket if we tried to push the engine back just to tighten the chain for uh, the chain to the jack shaft side so that's kind of the issues I'm running on 
I'm running with or I'm having. Uh, I think I'm going to break out the gear calculator, gear ratio calculator, and see what the big difference is. Because it's probably going to be way easier to ditch this sprocket and go back to the 60 whatever tooth sprocket is. I'll let you guys know if we do that. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm just working on the logistics of this and trying to figure out how I'm going to actually make this happen. So the other sprocket is a 68 tooth sprocket. And this is the size difference right here. So I think we're going to end up going with this because it's going to give us a little clearance. So when we first started this, um, this is a 10 tooth, um, a 10 tooth uh, clutch. They're you can't buy one. I can't find one anyways. Uh, now this is an old one. So 10 tooth clutch helps our gear ratio, okay? Uh, at first I think I had a 12 tooth on there and I don't have the gear ratios for that, but trust me, they're worse than this or a higher speed than this. So with this 10 tooth on here and our 68 tooth sprocket, we had a calculated um, speed of top speed if this engine turns 3600 RPM, which is what it's designed to turn. Uh, it may turn more than that. So anyways, 22 miles an hour. So then when we swapped to the freaking rooster, when we swapped to the 75 tooth, we brought that top speed down to 20 miles an hour. It's still way too fast. Now with this jack shaft, which is a 20 tooth in and a 10 tooth out, which I think basically cuts everything in half, which is what it sounds like. So um, if we were to keep our, um, if we were to keep the 75 tooth on there, it cuts us from 20 to 10 and then it's literally it does it's half so us going to so 10 miles an hour with our jack shaft with this sprocket 11 miles an hour with our jack shaft and the 68 to the sprocket so we're literally cutting the speed in half so we're going to go from well not quite in half because we're going back to this so we were at 20 miles an hour with this now we're going to go down to 11 miles an hour by going back to this sprocket and having this jack shaft. I think that's acceptable. I think that's going to be fine. Um, you know, uh, top speed for this thing, gear ratio. It says, um, so with this sprocket, it's a 15 to 1 gear ratio. And with this sprocket and the jack shaft, that's also with the jack shaft, it's a 13.6 to 1 uh, gear ratio. So I'm just going to call it on this sprocket. We'll put this away for something else. We're going to put this 68 tooth on there for clearance issues. It's going to make my wife life a lot easier and um, going to give us room to slide the engine back if we need to. Let's just go ahead and ditch this sprocket. We'll put this one back on there and then we'll move forward on trying to make a mount for this and all the other stuff that's going to happen here. Alright, so I was having an issue there where the torch wasn't firing when it was supposed to. So I ended up with uh, a couple of partials there. I ran the program twice. Um, both times it cut the first one fine and then when it went to the second one it was like delayed. And then it started going. Um, not sure what happened there. I thought it might be something to do with the torch, but I just used the torch manually and it worked fine. So, you know, I'm still um, working through a learning process with this machine. But I uh, will pick the best three of these because I need three for what I'm doing. And uh, we'll get them cleaned up and ready to weld onto the swing arm.
Okay, so we need to start putting this back together. I got this shaft in here and I'm debating on, I don't know, we need to get the engine on. I'm trying to figure out if I want to put a spacer in here. It's weird because this uh, small gear is so small that if I put a regular uh, spacer like this in there, uh, the chain will hit it. So I'll have to put it in the lathe and turn a little edge on it so the chain doesn't run into it. But I need to figure out exactly where it needs to be so I guess the engine has to go back on first um, get the clutch on there and line everything up because there might need to be a washer behind here in fact I'd like to have a washer behind here because if this is jammed up against here it's just going to rub on the outside of the bearing instead of the inside so uh, I might need to put a washer in there and then that's going to change you know so we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out um, the other thing is I could just not run a spacer at all and these these have uh, set screws on them so it'll keep them from moving around and they can only go so far so um, they can't I mean these could migrate to each other and then the chain could start rubbing on on this one that could be an issue so I don't know I kind of do want to put a spacer on there but first we gotta get the engine back on there get everything lined up I'll work on getting that spacer in there that's what we're gonna do there's just there's no it's just what is what it is. I'm going to put a spacer on there. Uh, this one here is keyed. This one's not keyed, so we need to put the key in there. But we got to get all of this done, and then we're going to move on. I got some stuff uh, to do the widening of the rear, the rear hubs. So let's get this engine back on here. Alright, well we got everything back together. You can see uh, we now have two chains. Uh, we got our chain tensioner on there. We can rotate this thing around. I had to play with the spacing. At first I had chains hitting, so I had to take everything back apart, move a couple things around, add some spacers here, take some away there. You know, but we got it all figured out. Chains aren't hitting anymore. They're real close to each other. Well now they got plenty of space, but you're, you're not really going to be able to tell from there, but, you know, it's, that's it, jack shaft. So, that's that whole project done. So we have a jack shaft. As long as all of this stays together, this should all be fine. This should work out. This cuts our speed down from 20 miles an hour to 11. And, but the next thing we need to do is I wanted to widen the whole, uh, the track width of the thing. So I'm going to add two inches to each side. Uh, but this right here is some sort of weird metric size shaft. It is a little bit more than uh, three quarters of an inch. Don't ask me. It's millimeters of some sort. I really don't have anything that measures millimeters. Although I do need to get one. I need to get a, another digital caliper. I killed my digital caliper probably well before I moved and uh, I haven't replaced it. So this is a, a, a hair over three quarters of an inch shaft. 
Um, so what do I got here? Let's grab a hub. So here's our hub. I need to make a piece of tubing like this that's two inches longer. And then I'm going to slide it on here. We're going to V-groove it. We're going to weld it. We're going to grind it down smooth. And then, but the problem is there is no tubing like this that I can get a hold of because it's metric. So what I have to do is I have to take this piece of solid stock and I have to turn, I have basically have to drill it out. So um, one thing that's going to be crucial is that I drill this thing out perfectly center. If it's not perfectly centered, this thing is going to be all kinds of wonky. So I'm really hoping that this turns out this could go, go wrong and it may not work out. But, and I don't know what I'll do in that case, to be honest with you. So but the other thing I have is I have this piece of tubing that I'm going to sleeve the whole thing with. So it's going to be super strong. So these are going to be two inches longer, which puts it from being here and moves it all the way out to about right there. So you can see that's actually two inches doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. So the whole thing will be four inches wider. Um, and then on the front, we're going to just cut that whole thing out and we're going to extend it. But right now we're going to work, we're going to focus on this rear since we have this whole thing out. So we're going to go over to the lathe we're going to chuck this thing up. We're going to get it as square as we possibly can in there, which hopefully is like a hundred percent, like, you know, square, which I don't know, you know, maybe a thousandth off or something. I don't really know. I'm not much of a machinist, but. We're gonna get this thing square in there as possible and we're gonna drill it out. It's gonna take a while because we gotta drill all the way to three quarter and then we're gonna take like a boring bar and we're gonna ream it out to match this size. So that's the plan, let's go over to the lathe. TIG weld this. We need to get really good penetration. I have both shoulders chamfered. We need to get really good, as best penetration as we can without actually fusing to the axle. So that's the challenge. So we're gonna get a good root pass in here, but not go so deep that 
that uh, we fuse it to the axle. All right, so I ran into a problem with the sound on my GoPro. I'm just showing you guys here. We got a really thick um, hub now. This thing is not gonna bend. If anything's gonna bend, it's gonna be the axle itself. Um, like I said earlier, they're two inches wider. You know, we did uh, some extra holes drilled in it so we could do some plug welds to make sure it's not gonna spin on there. These things are super duper strong and I don't think we're gonna have any problems with them. So these bolts that we're using to hold the hubs on, they are grade eight and we are double nutting them as I could not find a fine thread uh, nylon lock nut at the hardware store, unfortunately. But this double lock should work just fine. And we're also cutting off the excess uh, bolt that we had because they were just a touch too long and I didn't want to leave, um, you know, quarter inch or so just hanging out past the nut. So now it's time to get this whole thing back together and get it on the cart. Um, everything bolted back up just fine. We are now four inches wider than we were before and that's pretty substantial. It doesn't seem like a lot, you know, two inches on this side, two inches on that side, but by the time you actually get it all together, it's uh, quite a bit. So here I'm showing you guys, I kind of ran into some clearance issues. You can see right here I had to notch into the floorboard and uh, make room for our, our jack shaft and sprockets. Um, I could have put it a little closer to the motor. I wish I would have, but you know, we wouldn't have gained much. We still would have had some issues. It wasn't a big deal. We made a couple of notches and a couple of cover plates and it's gonna work out just fine. Okay, so now that we're done with the rear, we are going to move on to the front. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna chop this front axle out of here and we're just going to widen it by four inches. I've got some one inch tubing and they'll, it'll just slide right in there and we'll weld it up. Uh, we're also going to have to lengthen uh, both tie rods, that steering one in the front and the one in the rear that links the two knuckles together. So that's where we're going from here.
All right, well, here it is. Four inches wider, jack shaft added. I just had it running. Did a couple adjustments on it and it is ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is get my son back on it. Hopefully it is controllable this time. See you guys in a minute. <laughs> there he goes. There you go. Good job. Come on. It's about as fast as it goes right there. Good job. Yeah. Go ahead. You can go. You can also press the pedal just a little bit. There you go. Keep going. Uh oh. What Dang. Happened? There you go. Just tap it. Hit the gas. There you go. There you go. You can go harder if you want. There you go. 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 God. That's it right there. That's top speed. <laughs> That's top speed. That was top speed right there. Is that fun? Yeah. All right. Should be able to go up the driveway. That's the test. All right. Take it up the driveway, okay? Hit the gas a little bit. Hit the gas a little bit. Just a, a little bit. There you go. Little Come on. Are we out of gas? No. Nope. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Need to put the throttle screw. Hit the brake! Jesus. <laughs> He's got it. Yeah! It's a little fast. Turn it. Turn it around. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. It finally works right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash that like button, hit me for me, hit the subscribe, smash the bell if you want to get notified for future videos coming out from DJ's Hot Room Fab. I'm breathing heavy here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.